Everybody, it's Matt Johnson. We are back with another episode of Real Estate Uncensored. This is where you get actionable ideas, insight, and inspiration to turn your real estate career into a life of freedom. We are so glad you're joining us today. We've got an amazing guest that's going to share a really, really cool topic. I'll get into more of that later, but essentially we're going to talk about how to share tips for improving your credit and how to use the information that you have on how to improve someone's credit to stay in contact with your clients over time and provide them value rather than having to say, hey, I don't know anything about that, go talk to a credit counselor. So we're going to talk to someone that went through that journey herself, developed her own materials and is now teaching workshops and will eventually uh, teach both mortgage professionals and real estate agents how to talk to their clients about credit without having to refer them out to, uh, to somebody else. So we'll get into all that. For now, we have the uh, the junior grandmaster himself in the co-pilot seat, Greg McDaniel. Greg, what is up today? What is up, big pimpin'? Uh, welcome back to the only state to live in, which would be California. Um, I uh, I gotta tell you, I went down for Gam Gam's uh, 90th birthday. My grandma is the sweetest woman on planet Earth. She had her 90th birthday. We did a surprise birthday party for her. Um, a lot of fun. Got to hang out with her. I did a live Facebook video, so if you guys are hearing my voice for the first time for any odd reason, um, you know what, go ahead, go to my Facebook page, Greg McDaniel, uh, friend me, or you can just watch the video about it, kind of see what's over there. So it's awesome, but Matt, I gotta tell you something, man. I gotta tell you something. If you if you could just surgically cut me in half and then just replace my left side, that would be awesome. Uh, yesterday in old band slow pitch softball, I decided to, to damage myself on multiple levels. I uh, did like this ninja spider roll, you know, grappling move thing, trying to catch a softball came at me and I like, did this like jump and barrel roll. And then I, you know, went on the ground and cut my leg all up, nearly ran into a fence trying to catch another ball. Um, Let's see what else I did. I caught a ball that hit me right in the foot, which now I'm pretty sure I think I broke my freaking foot. Um, and what else? There was some, uh, some other ailment that, that took place with me, and I'm just like, fuck, man, just cut me in half. Put, put the new side back on because, damn, this hurts. Okay. Oh, this, is, this is slow pitch, pitch softball. Slow pitch. Oh, by the way, we're in the D League, so A, B, C, D, bottom little level, and yeah. we're consistent. I got to say we're consistent. We have never gotten a W next to our name yet. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> tearing it up! <laughs> I think we, I think we're the worst of the worst part of the league. Oh, oh. God, oh. yeah, not not playing with a lot of uh, ex college ball and triple A players, huh? <laughs> no, we're playing with, with a guy that looks like Santa Claus. Um, that's the kind of the sportsmanship that we have, and so okay. it's uh, it was it's been fun, you know. You pull and like the guy you know, that yeah. uh, goes for a fly ball and he gets lost in his beard. <laughs> Yeah, it's, like, it's in there somewhere. Oh, there's, oh, like, there's hang on, I caught it, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So that, that I literally can't put my foot down on the ground. It hurts so bad. Oh, that's what it was. I caught a ball. Remember last time I caught a ball here barehanded, and that right. hurt like a bitch. Well, I did decide to do it this hand this time because I was playing first base, and it hit me here. So now if I smack my hand too hard, it hurts. That's why the whole left side of my body is just fucked. <laughs> just fucked. So you need like a like a stroke victim, you need just the entire left side of your body just replaced. This they'd be perfect if you could do that for me. Okay. I just offended so many people. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, if you're just joining us live, thank you uh, and sorry. Uh, but uh, <laughs> for those of you who are watching the replay on YouTube, go ahead and hit subscribe. That'll give you access to all of our future videos as well as uh, um, uh, our live broadcast and all that good stuff. Uh, anyway, and then if you like the uh, the audio version nestled so deep right between your ears where we so, so, so belong, so uh, just so head deep. on over to iTunes and Stitcher and subscribe there. Make sure you get the audio versions. That's it's right. Deep. That way you don't have to look at our ugly mugs while we're, uh, oh, God. we're broadcasting. Yeah, nobody we wants burn that. burn people's eyes daily. I mean, yeah, they're exactly. like, oh. <laughs> oh. We have to go in for surgical, re you know, get their eyes redone. It's a, it's, right. a, it's a bad thing. Have you ever seen Armageddon? People walking around, the guy who burned his eyes, got the big old white patches across his face, kept running into shit. That's what happens. People watch us on this show. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, <laughs> if I was to, yeah. If I had my shirt off, that's exactly what would happen because I would blind uh, yeah. now I Now I have a mental need, I need to I get, out get out there. I'm uh, a very, very white Midwestern boy. What can I say? You're a glow stick, but the white version. <laughs> <Close>. <laughs> Yes, exactly. Just All right, yeah, don't look at me, don't look at me directly in the eye if you're on like ecstasy or something. You may you'll be tripping for a long time. All right. So there was a there was a question that caught my eye because it's right, uh, shall we say, in our wheelhouse, Greg. Ooh, so I this like is from the uh, lab coats aid, lab code agents group. So Matt Vigiano uh, says I have an out of state buyer and like to do a live video via Google Hangouts. 
I'm just looking for any tips, tricks, and advice from whoever has done this before to make it pleasant and useful for the buyers. So, well, first of all, let's address, is Google Hangouts the best choice for even doing that with buyers? Yeah. Uh, and if so, what would, uh, what would you say? I mean, so is this like he's going to be in an office or is he going to be on site? What is he doing? He wants to do a live video to show an out-of-state buyer the home or oh, homes dude. that he's showing them. Facebook Live, dude. That's why you, you invite the one person to the Facebook Live. You don't go public on it. Make sure you have a good, you know, you have good uh, uh, either cell coverage or Wi-Fi, so you don't go and fall out. Um, and then what I do is, you know, you need to make sure I'm actually going to do a Facebook Live. I'm Facebook Live about doing Facebook Lives today. Actually, here's nice. the sheets right here. Um, but the a couple of things you need to really take into consideration is your audio and your light. Um, and you'd also want to make sure that you're not going to like if this. If your phone here, you, you're not going to be doing this stuff and giving them nausea while they walk through the house. That's not going to help. You're not going to have a very good first impression, okay? <laughs> <laughs> that was a rough ride. No, uh, audio and uh, light are going to be huge. Go out and get a smart lab for 80 bucks on Amazon. So smart LAV lab. Yep, Matt has his. I use mine. Consistently gives quality audio. Even if you got crap lighting, uh, at least you'll give her better audio for the for the person to experience the entire you know property. Uh, that would be my go-to's uh, for that. If you wanted to do multiple people on a video a tour of a home, uh, go and get the Blab um, app, and then go do a live Blab with the other people watching it. That would be the other way I do it with multiple viewers. So, okay. well, allow me to uh, to partially disagree with you because I, I do agree oh, that a Facebook naturally. Live would be fantastic uh, if you want to broadcast it. It doesn't give them much interaction though, and yeah, I think does. that's it gives them the ability to comment through text. It's not the same as doing a Google Hangout as like you and I are doing to where we're actually interacting one-on-one -on, -one on video. So a Google Hangout actually would be a really good way to tour a house because then they get to say, hey, go back up and hey, what, what about that? And they can actually ask questions live and you can just go, okay, this is this and then turn around and talk to them and face to face and then go to the next room and then turn around and talk to them. So, um, I mean, you can install a Google Hangouts. Yeah, you can do, you can do Blab. Um, Google Hangouts is super easy to use. Uh, I've never used Blab on a phone uh, to do that, but yeah, that's I mean you can do either one. Uh, as far as tips, tricks, and advice, the Smart Lab is probably the key, and then just making sure you're holding the phone uh, level as much as humanly possible, uh, like Greg said. And um, well, you can you get little tripods like this if you want to just set it down. If there's something to set it on, <clears throat> these are great. These are super portable, mm -hmm. and now you can just set your phone. Right on that. So this is great if you then want to pick up, you know, and just talk to them. When you, once you're done with the tour and you just want to set this down and talk to them. So that's what I've got my phone sitting on right over here. So yeah, that's, I, mean, I just did my Facebook Live before we went uh, into this call. I just did my Facebook Live using that. And just had that propped up on that little tripod. Yeah, if you don't have that, guys, you go and take your phone and put it up against uh, a coffee mug. You can put it up against the stack of cards, you know, or against your phone. I mean, whatever's going to hold it up, right? Make sure that you have good good quality audio. It's really whatever you want to use. I mean, any of those three platforms we just talked about, it's going to be absolutely perfect. If you want to go a little bit more high tech and there's someone else there that's with you, um, you can go get an IO grapher. So it's IO grapher for like 500 bucks. And it'll, it'll, it'll talk to you which model of your iPhone or iPad would be the right one. For like $500, you're going to get a rogue uh, mic. You're going to get a light attachment. Then you're going to get the actual device, which you can plug in your... Um, yeah, you plug in your device too, and you, it'll give steady quality audio, sound, and visuals. And you can control your environment with that. If you're going to be doing a lot of these, like I am, I'm about this close to buying one because I'm a yeah, you're doing nerd. a ton of it. Yeah, like on location Facebook Live stuff. Yeah, a lot of my stuff I'm doing there, uh, just like that. So that would that's be that'd be something we can go into a whole other segment in regards to like how you could you know easily justify it because you could take it out to your local coffee shop, your makeup shop, your hairstylist, your restaurant, whoever, and do almost professional grade interviews and you know walkthroughs and you know everything else for their property or uh, for their business, so that then you can get branded with them. They go brand out to their sphere with you, and you take it back to yours as uh, professional, but it will give you quality, you know, audio, visual, you know, AI, AV content, which is important, you know, which is very important, especially when we walk out empty house, that smart lab that Matt just showed everybody, um, it will take away all the 99.9% .9 of all the echo uh, that you'd get in like wooded hallways or bathrooms or something like that. 
Yeah, and that and that's huge. Like Greg talked about, like the shaky video and stuff, and that that does get a little annoying. But uh, when people watch videos and stuff, the audio is such a huge, huge factor. A lot huge. more important sometimes than the video. Yeah, ran over my Very charging good. cord. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you ran over the charging cord for what? Your phone or your laptop? My phone. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good thing it's sturdy, like bull. We're good. <laughs> All right. So there was another question. Um, that caught my eye before Alyssa joins us here and we talk about uh, credit and stuff like that. So Nina Parker asked, I'm building my team and at this point I have an assistant, a buyer agent, and uh, an LA, which I assume is a listing assistant. What leadership classes have you found to be most beneficial as the team lead? Um, our disc profiles are all over the board. So Greg, have you noticed anything out there? I um, mean, you know, obviously Keller Williams has a ton of stuff, but you've been around the block and you've been through a lot of the uh, the other coaches' stuff. Is there anything that caught your eye as far as uh, good leadership materials for managing real estate teams? Yeah, go educate your fucking self. I mean, you can only be as good as you know. You know, if you say I'm going to be a good leader, I'm going to hire someone else to do it. No, bro, you got to do it. You got to go out and, and and be the leader. You have to go out and fix the problems that you see in yourself to become the most complete person that you can then pass down those traits onto your your underlings, right? You know, the folks that are going to look to you for leadership down the road. Yeah. And with you know, and with that being said, I mean, I I like um, what I like about leadership. I mean, I like Gary Keller, like you said, a lot of his stuff. You know, the millionaire real estate agent, which I naturally don't have sitting next to me. Um, but then you just go out and get everything, huh? That's it, you loser. How dare you not have that book within arm's reach at any given it time? Is, it is. It's right there. Oh, I just I'm can't sure reach it. it. Is. Oh, you know what, Master? Okay, we cannot verify this. Alyssa has joined us, by the way. Alyssa, how are you? Good. I'm so sorry. No, you're fine. It's all good. We're glad you were able to make it. Ah, see? There it is. Oh, right. Told okay. you. Okay. Who's got it? <laughs> I would add to that the uh, the five dysfunctions of a team. Pretty much anything by uh, Patrick Lencioni is really good. We gotta get him on the show. show. We gotta get him on the show. We, we sold him his house, his last house. Mm -hmm. So yeah, get on the hey, ball, Alyssa. Come on now. Shush it, Alyssa. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. All right, so Alyssa, give us the um, give us a little sixty second bio on who you are, where you are, and what you do for your clients. Oh, 60 seconds. Okay. I am uh, I'm a mortgage lender here in Scottsdale, Arizona. I work with Cherry Creek Mortgage. I've been a lender for about 13 years. I'm a, a continuing education instructor. Uh, I teach a fair housing class called Understanding Your Credit Potential. And I also have a side company I'm just launching called Color My Credit, which is kind of mixing a real simple process of uh, coloring and the childlike perspective of, of education, um, kind of taking people back to kindergarten to understand something that's really complicated and overwhelming but essential in building a financial legacy. So you know, has Matt, has Matt enrolled yet? Matt is a, is a, is a, is a <laughs> graduated student. <laughs> I'll get him some help. I'll be in the first class. Okay. Uh, well, listen, give people, in a, especially agents, give them a sense of um, what caught my eye as far as the potential of this, which is to to keep in touch with your, your clients or even people that aren't clients yet but you hope to be clients. So how does that fit into the, the real estate agent and the mortgage broker's world in terms of how they can use this information? Well, I see a lot of agents that are, are after the immediate buck. You know, they're not they're not looking to go work with renters because they don't see the potential of building this whole pipeline of of people that will eventually be homeowners, right? Well, same thing with credit. I mean, what we went through in 08 and 09, kind of this, the housing crisis, the crash of everything, um, it, it changed everyone's perspective on uh, you know on debt, on credit, on money. Uh, even if they were raised uh, to understand how to pay bills. They might not have been taught how to get something removed from their credit. That's an error. Um, so what I see is there's a lot of people that are uh, back in the marketplace and, and they might be eligible, but in their mind, they're thinking they're not. Uh, they're saying to themselves, I had an ex who destroyed my credit eight years ago. You know, I had this situation that happened 10 years ago, and so I'm done. And yeah. the neat thing for me is I started really diving into credit three years ago, but started looking at uh, credit scores, realizing that the credit report it carries seven years of information, but the credit scores are only based really on that last 24 months of history. 24 months, two years. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't built up some credit cards, some things that are kind of drowning out the bad with good, 
then yeah, you're in that same bad mindset of not being ready to purchase a home. If you've uh, taken it on, uh, if you've taken the step to go ahead and look at it and 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 uh, start uh, opening up a couple new secured credit cards and kind of start building it back up again, you'd find you're you're probably not that far away. Um, the the biggest thing I see is agents that are looking for that immediate uh, deal right now and they're missing out on just asking a question and asking you know I don't know if credit is holding you back from purchasing a home but my partner is a credit expert it's free it's no obligation let her, let her sit down with you and put together a game plan I mean what, what do you got to lose most people want a game plan they want a checklist they want to I can't buy a house today so it's not it's either a yes or it's a not now but here's how that's how my team works, you know. So it's about building a game plan and getting them something that will quickly get them back into uh, finding a home. And so for a realtor, it's it's great to be able to uh, get them their clients that they thought that you know were going to be a year out. Sometimes I get them back in 30, 60 days. Wow! Wow! Yeah. yeah. Ready to go. Do you see a lot of um, new new first-time buyers that are falling victim to this, or is it uh, some of the people that are coming out of the crash in 08 that are a little gun-shy? I mean, are you seeing uh, either side You know, that's more prevalent? A little mix of both. I've got people that either have derogatory credit, have things on their credit that uh, they need to get removed or they need to get corrected, and then there's quite a bit of... Uh, of younger people who have thin credit files. While we were all losing our homes, losing everything. <laughs> losing our minds. <laughs> losing our minds. Obama decided to put together the Credit Card Act of 09. You ever heard of that? And I will the now. The Credit Card Act of 2009 said uh, no more marketing to the under 21 year olds. Uh, you know, for credit cards. I used to walk down. I, I went to Arizona State University. I'd go down the the you know main school hall and they'd be throwing out cups and shit and everything to get us to <laughs> say they're like lassoing you with ropes getting you into a booth yeah. and you sign up for a card right <laughs> out of vodka here we go uh, so anyways I had a few credit cards um, a and few? Do, we need, do we mean by like 15 to 20 I had to learn the hard way uh, <laughs> yeah but Obama came along and said no more marketing to them uh, oh by the way if you're under 21 if you want to get a credit card uh, you're gonna have to prove your income or you're going to have to get mom and dad to co-sign. So in 09, were mom and dad going to co-sign? No. Oh, they are losing their house. So they said, go get a student loan. Get out of our face. Go get <laughs> And they couldn't get credit cards. So what we got is like, you know, 18-year-old back then, 24 years old now. They're getting ready to get married. They're starting their life, and they're looking at their credit saying, I got nothing. I got nothing. Mm -hmm. I got a thin credit file. And so it's helping them. Uh, really, the power is in credit cards. It really, it really comes down to it. I've really got to kind of reteach America because Dave Ramsey, who I like, but <laughs> Dave Ramsey says to everybody, cut up your credit cards. You don't need them. Wrong. Don't totally wrong. Like unless, even if you're Warren Buffett, you need insurance, right? Mm -hmm. So employers, car insurance, home insurance, uh, you know, every kind of uh, utility, everybody's running your credit anymore. And there's a little uh, lever uh, called credit cards that if you have a couple credit cards and you know how to use them, you don't spend more than 20% of what the limit is on that credit card and you use it every month, you buy something small, pay it off. Put it on the gym membership, pay it off. You do that a few months in a row, you start drowning out the bad with good. And you don't have to have good credit to get a secured credit card. And they don't know the difference between an unsecured and a secured credit card on your credit report. Well, I uh, in 09, I mean, I went through bank, uh, bank uh, foreclosure, bankruptcy, uh, lost everything down to $35 to my name. Right. You know, and right. So, I didn't have shit to show for a yeah. for my for my credit. So they, my bank put me on a on a, um, a while back put me on a secured card, yep. and just like doing like like what you said, you know, it was this lower yeah. limit. And so you'd you know I'd use it, pay it off, use it, yep. pay it off, use it, pay it off, and the in the credit, you know, if they're like, hey, it's un, it's unsecured, just go for it. You had a X Y and Z limit, blah blah blah, mm -hmm. you know. And I, I uh, my father had put me on a credit card when I was working for another company with them mm -hmm. uh, for travel, and he was a card he uses and pays off all the time. Thank An God. authorized user card, right? He just added you on. Added me on, and so he's paying it off. It built my credit up, you right. know, r really quickly. Yeah, you inherited. Uh, 
I did. It was freaking awesome. Yeah. So, <laughs> I do. I tell kid, parents all the time, like, if you're trying to get your kid going for college, either get them, go, uh, Discover Chrome has a great student card they'll get, they'll get, they'll get uh, approved for, but adding your child onto a, your card as an authorized user, they just need your social, and you can take them off at any time, and don't get them a credit card. You don't even have to give them, a, don't, no, give them a credit don't give them the card. <laughs> yeah. But right. just you keep that card in the safe and inside room. of another safe. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you something really popular. It's a, it's a great little trick, too, but you got to be careful if I've got a minute. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. okay. Really quick. Have you heard of Lending Club? Prosper.com. Have you heard Prosper, of yeah. this? Okay, Prosper. Prosper's competitions, uh, the Lending Club. Becoming really popular. They're direct online banks. You can cut out a lot of the overhead uh, just going direct. So what happens is people will go on and they will apply for um, a, a lending club loan to consolidate all their credit cards, which is a neat trick because the lending club loan is an installment loan, not a revolving credit card. So 30% right. of your credit card of your credit score is based on your revolving debt. And when your revolving credit cards are maxed out, your credit score could be 100 points lower, right? So you go in, you get one of these installment lending club loans. You pay off all your debt, your credit cards, with this installment loan. That They're going to be like a three- or a five-year term. And you pay it off, and when you pay it off, it's over, right? Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, you've paid it off, and now all of your credit card balances go to zero. Your credit score jumps up 100 points, okay? Then you take your insurance, your car insurance, your auto, you go down the list and you and you and you get better rates and you refi your car and you you get your uh, all of your pay, your other payments in, in line, and then you have this one fixed payment over at Lending Club, right? And it in installment debt doesn't count in that what you owe versus what the limit is. So it's a it's a great little trick, but this is what happens. Let now, me, what can, oh, is, it, is it similar to like a hard money loan, a higher, higher uh, yeah. interest rate? Or? Not a higher interest rate, though. It, it ranges anywhere. It depends on your credit risk and the loan amount and all those things. It's anywhere from like 1000 to 40000 that you can um, borrow. You go right online. You fill out a little form, and it's a soft inquiry on your credit. So a lender wouldn't even see that there was this hard inquiry there to question it, you know, that there's this loan out there. Mm -hmm. I say that for another reason, but it's a soft inquiry. They check your credit. They give you a quote. We'll lend you thirty-five thousand at eleven percent. You might look at the rest of your credit cards and be like, "I'm paying an average of twenty-two percent on all my credit cards," yeah. and it might make a lot of sense. But you're on a payment plan, three to five years, okay? Um, and then you know it's not something you keep borrowing from. Now you don't. Don't close your credit cards over here because you need the length of history. That's 15% of your credit score. So you need that time open with those credit cards, but you need to put them away. Give yeah, them the quit Give spending them. it. But is, is, there, is there a balloon payment option or do you have to run it? Is it no, so they, do they make them in their interest? You can pay it off right away. There's no prepayment penalty, but they do charge like different. They're all a little bit different, but they charge like an origination fee. So sometimes it's like five hundred dollars, or but if you are really serious about trying to get out of credit card debt, you're not going to do it making these minimum payments. No. But if you could switch no. it over to a three or five year term, and let's just say by just doing that, you raise your credit score a hundred points, and you can go down the list and get better home insurance, better auto insurance, um, better uh, a better insurance rate on, or a rate on your car, and let's just say it turns into four or five hundred dollars savings every month. Go apply that to your installment loan now. Mm -hmm. Pay it down yeah. faster. And it, it, yeah. it, just, it is waterfalls on top of its on the, okay. on top of itself. Yeah. But here's it the big problem out. with agents. They need to remember, it is an it's a it's a loan that takes about three to six months before showing up on your credit report. Uh, so what happens with a lender is that you know we get you pre-qualified. You put you in the car. You're out looking at homes. You find a home. You get an inspection, you get an appraisal, we're moving right along. And on your bank statement, it shows you made a lending club loan. And it's not on your credit report. And it's not showing there. The underwriter then would take like an FHA loan and make it a manual downgrade. So it's a manual underwrite all of a sudden. Yeah. Manual underwrite, yuck, means you go uh, from like, okay, at 52% debt ratio down to 43% maximum debt ratio. So you kill your whole deal right there if you don't make sure it's showing on credit first. Huh. So, you, so get it done. So be proactive, not reactive. Right. Get it done 
eight, let's just say eight months ahead of time, right? Whatever. Right. Six months. Or just, yeah. or just check your credit. Once you see it showing up, then move forward. Then you move forward. Right. Gotcha. That's very interesting. So this is a good solution if you've got buyers that come to you that they have a they have they have a, a range on their monthly payment, and let's say they can't they can't hit their range on the home they want, but if they actually spent six months doing this, mm -hmm. it would get their credit score up, their rates down, and all of a sudden they can afford more home for the same monthly payment, and they're willing to wait, and you're willing to keep in touch with them over that time. Absolutely, got to be really strategic. I mean, yeah. I try to just incubate everybody, stay in front of them, do the marketing. I have a color my credit Facebook page. Uh, you know, I use Facebook quite a bit, and I just try to stay really in front of everybody because even your sister will forget what you do for a living. <laughs> you have to my go, look at me, forgets. look at me. <laughs> I will be pissed if my true. sister forgets. <laughs> <laughs> just, hey, you know, I just bought a house, Greg. You want to come over and check it out? And you just, like, throw yourself off the nearest cliff. Yeah, That's it. Exactly. You're dead to me. Take your sister card out and tear it up. <laughs> All right, I'll so uh, so we're gonna do a couple of shout outs real quick, and then I want to get back into and, uh, and go into maybe the principles of, of color my credit and how you've drawn some some helpful analogies and a way to simplify and ways to talk about this stuff with your clients without drowning them in the minutia of all this stuff. So, right. Uh, so, Greg, you want to get to your shout outs first this time? Absolutely, I, I would, Matt. That's that's mighty nice of you. Um, so I don't have a lot of them actually because. Uh, you know, we haven't had any shows between the last one, but uh, I just got on the phone with Sandy and Larry out of Hawaii. Aloha, you two. I know you guys are listening, so glad you guys are a part of it. Uh, we're thinking about putting together a uh, high-level networking group, so if anyone's interested in doing that, um, you got to be, you know, a producer you to, or, you know, and or bring, like, a high level of you know, knowledge about, like, technology and marketing and stuff like that that we can kind of pass around and get best practices from. Rod out of San Diego hit me up today. What's up, buddy? Bam, knuckles to you, brother. Um, he had a quick question about um, about some about how to handle an objection, which is really cool. Um, and by the way, watch him on, if you guys are in the San Diego area, Matt, uh, watch The Neighborhood SD. It's on Sundays at noon. It's his new reality show. Uh, he did a great job. He sent me the clip of it. It was awesome. Mike, you big pimp from Clayton. What's up, player? Good to talk with you today. Uh, I'm glad Facebook I mean, and social media has been so kind to you. And yes, you were killing me with your comments. I was sitting there going, this guy's off his damn rocker. Then, Kurt, I get to talk to you tonight for the McDaniel Challenge. Um, I'm looking forward to it, man. We're really pumped to kind of get some time to chat. And now, all of you who don't know what the McDaniel Challenge is, it's really, really simple. We've gone over it so many times. Look, yes, it is working. I checked it before this call. Um, Mike, get a hold of me on my private cell phone, you guys. It's uh, 925-915-1978. Matt, I don't think you know this. P there was a misconception out there that people actually thought they had to pay for the McDaniel Challenge. And, uh, that is incorrect. incorrect. That is incorrect. You have been wrong yet again, young grasshopper. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, it's a free call, guys. It's 100% free. No obligations, no pitches, no bullshit like that. So if you want to get an hour and a half to two hours with me coaching, walking through stuff, I think June. Hold on, let me find my damn. Yeah, what are you up to? June 18th, 21st, uh, 35th. No, it would be the 21st. Okay. Uh, June 21st is my next time, guys. Get a, get a hold of me. It's free coaching for an hour and a half to two hours, 100%. So it's McDaniel Challenge, take it, get off the fence, stop being yourself, change your life, do something you're going to thank yourself for in 10 years. That's right. Hashtag wow, don't let Greg spend a night alone. Hashtag do not let Greg spend a night alone. <laughs> All it's, right. bad. It's, it's bad for everybody involved. It is bad. All right. So uh, for my shout outs, just quickly, I want to thank Viral Marketing for helping to make podcasts and hangouts like these happen. So they do a fantastic job of running uh, Greg's real estate video blog up in the Bay Area. So if you want to see exactly what they do for him, including examples of his YouTube channel and the emails that they send out to keep in touch with his database and the videos that they shoot for him, just go to gregsmarketingexamples.com. There's some great information there as well as a way to get more information about how they can help you. Uh, and then uh, Jeff Cohn, if you want to check out his team building workshop, the next one is coming up. Uh, May 23rd. I think it's two Mondays from now or something like that. So if you want to drop into uh, beautiful and scenic Omaha, Nebraska and see how one of the top real estate teams in the country is run from the inside, you could spend 12 hours with Jeff and his whole team there. Uh, just go to EliteRealEstateSystems.com and check out the team building workshops. So, all yeah. right. Uh, that, and, and that would be a hell of an opportunity for you guys to do that. I mean, Jeff's no joke. Um, Jeff is a serious badass. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, yeah and then we're getting ready to launch something called the Team Building Podcast, so keep an eye out for that. I'll be letting everybody know uh, through this show how they can subscribe to that podcast. We'll be doing one each week with Jeff or a member of the staff, and we'll be interviewing not only other team leaders around the country, but also some of their ops managers and marketing directors to really get the inside scoop on what's working for some of the top teams in the nation as far as lead gen and marketing. So uh, so keep an ear out uh, for that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, cool All right, stuff. so Alyssa. Keep so let's dive back into uh, color my credit. So, take me through a little bit about uh, how you came to arrive at some of the concepts and how how you kind of simplified how to talk to clients about credit without just drowning them in, in the minutia of this stuff. Well, uh, first I'll say I'm a mom. I'm a I'm a, a mom of a six and a nine year old, two little girls that like to color a lot. So, I that. you know, I gotta I gotta try to multitask all the time. So they color coloring books, I color credit reports. Okay? Anyway. But uh, the, actually, the idea came, I was teaching Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University. I brought it into a bunch of different real estate offices and was teaching it as a series. I thought if I could change the way they look at their money, then maybe they would have a better influence on their clients. You know, they would be more confident in what they're doing. Uh, you know, get are you saying questions. that realtors are not the most qualified people to give financial advice? I know. I don't understand. <laughs> it's funny how many times I ask for questions in classes and nobody answers you know, ask me questions, and as I'm walking to my car, I get um, like followed to my car. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Stop, and they, and they, ma'am, can I just, can I just ask you one personal question? You know, and I say, sure, yes, yeah. of course. It's a oh, shameful thing. It's a hard thing. I think even realtors, you know, they don't want to uh, touch into that shameful personal place, right? Well, nobody does. But I mean, no if this is your profession. You might as well get there and ask questions. I mean, right. Right. Yeah. Unless you're like Greg and you've come so far since the crash that you're just you don't care and you lay it all all on the line. Yeah. I just don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, the thing is, is I am uh, 38, and so I graduated from college or high school 20 years ago. And 20 years ago, I used to think, why don't they have more of a program in the schools to teach kids about you know preparing them for money for life? And guess what? 20 years later, nothing. Still nothing. So I thought, okay, well, what if it is as simple as a seven-week series instead of nine for Dave Ramsey's uh, series uh, for Financial Peace University, but maybe it's seven areas. It's color my budget, color my credit, color my taxes, my insurance, my retirement, my house, my legacy. Okay, Seven areas in which there's overwhelming, complicated financial documents that nobody understands. Okay? And we're going to color them. And coloring them not in a childish way, in a way that's a sophisticated method. A color my method is the understanding of complicated financial areas in order to build a financial legacy. Using simplicity, using a kinder like a kinder uh, garden perspective. So when we were kids, we asked questions, we were tireless, uh, we used color to help memorize things. Uh, you know, the color activity books from back then, you know, you did crossword puzzles, you did you did play to help remember. Um, and I'm a doodler, you know, uh, doodling has always helped my kind of right brain mentality in my left brain world. Um, uh, I won't touch on that yet, but I, you know, I come from a very creative background. We can talk about that later, but more. Oh, we're going to. <laughs> in, in, about, in about 10 minutes, we're going to dive into that. But, you know, I go into entertainment comedy, and then I'm in this banking world with a lot of paper, and I'm like, ugh, ugh. You know, what can I do to kind of jazz this flare up, put some color in this? So I really do have a method. Um, I'm really, what it comes down to is, you know, people, the first step being color my credit because it links into everywhere else. Uh, the credit report people pull up sometimes from uh, annual credit report or from my FICO it turns into 120 pages for a report good, good because one. it's seven good. to ten years of your information right well a good 90 percent of it can be blacked out because it's not affecting the score it hasn't reported in the last 24 months oh, so what wow. I do is try to I literally take a credit report that might be 30 pages and I make it into a two-page document, too. I rewrite the credit report. Mm. Just the information that's important, okay? We're going to look at the derogatory accounts, only the ones that have reported in the last 24 months. And when I say date reported, is because uh, they have it costs money for these data furnishers to report to the credit bureaus. So a medical collection will report one time, 
usually, and then just to park on your credit and stay there for seven years, they're there. But as you move further away from the date they reported it first, it, it fades, okay, until it's not in the, the mix of what makes your credit score your credit score when it's been more than 24 months. So when I go through people's credit and I'm going through all these trade lines, I'm looking to see, well, that one hasn't reported in five years, that one hasn't reported in four years, that one has So if you do anything on that specific trade line, all it's going to do is move the dates up to the date reported is now. And so if it was a collection and it was four years ago that they reported it, it's not part of your credit score, but you call it up and pay the collection, it moves the date up to now. And it drops your credit. So score. actually, paying stuff off can actually drop your credit score. Yes, you don't just go down the list and start paying everything. You have oh. to be methodical about it, or it will drop your score. It hmm. wasn't even That's part crazy. of the mix. Now you're bringing it back in the mix, and a collection can never be good. It's going to be know. bad to begin with, and it's only going to get worse. So, you have the, there's only one way to negotiate a collection ever is to call and say, "I will pay this if you will delete it and get it in writing." You get it in writing and then you send it into the credit bureaus yourself because you don't trust them. No. And if you were working with me as a lender, I would send it in and three days later it would be removed from the credit. I use the rescore system. So it takes me about three days to send it up to the credit bureaus and get it rapidly rescored. Nice. So, yeah, so just why, why is it, just so everyone can fully understand, why, why can't you just you know, pay everything off? Why is that bad? Because you need to keep a, you know, some sort of a balance out there? or is it, They have to accurately report. And so now they're saying that the date of last activity on that account, they're moving it up to current. And like mm -hmm. I said, they're looking at the dates going back 24 months. They're looking at what has happened to this person in the last 24 months. Mm -hmm. When an, an account, like let's just say it's a credit card you've never been laid on, if they update uh, a good account, let's say, let's say, Greg, that you have a Victoria's Secret account and you haven't yeah. used it in about <laughs> three years. It's been a while for you. Three years. <laughs> and I tell you, you know what, Greg, there's everything on your credit looks good, but this Victoria's Secret account that you've had open since 1982 uh, and uh, you haven't used it in three years, well, it's not in the mix anymore because you haven't used it. It's a date of last activity. I okay. have done this personally. I've told you, go, Greg, go buy something small at Victoria's Secret this weekend. Something small. <laughs> something skimpy or something bucks. small. Give me a statement that shows now that you owe twenty, thirty dollars on that account. I send it into the credit bureaus. That account and its history gets brought back into the mix. And this is a true story. I've had a client that I just recently did this with. Her score came up forty points. Whoa. Forty points to go buy something. I need to go buy some bras. Yeah. <laughs> You gotta move up your date of last activity, Greg. Uh, I just think it would be funny if Greg had a Victoria's Secret card since the year I was born. <laughs> you probably did. And I was born. And I was three years old, and I was already a pimp. That's right. Hey, baby. That's right. Look, I'm just planning for the future. Just setting myself up. You never, you never well, can be too prepared. Yeah, no. there's, there's all those kind of little tricks. I'll tell you something. I always get the millionaire guys that are like, I don't care about your credit stuff. I don't want to. I've got money. I don't need it. And uh, I had several recently that all had a 30-day late showing up on a Capital One credit card or something. They were out of town, something. One 30-day late. All of them, their scores had dropped 100 points from one 30-day late. Good. They call up. Sucks. They say, can I get a goodwill removal of that late? I've never been late before in the past. Can I get a goodwill removal? They remove the late. They gave me a letter. I send it in. Three days later, scores come up 100 points. Oh, they closed geez. on a million-dollar home that Chase just did an item on. Wow. I don't know why. All right, so let's talk a little bit about how, how realtors and mortgage brokers can use this information to keep in touch with their clients or even just to keep in touch with their database and send out some of these tips. Like where, where can you get some of this information? And right. how can you get that out in order to keep in touch with people? Right. So um, a lot of the information I'm starting to put out on Color My Credit, um, I've on been going Facebook through group. my own thing that has prevented me from uh, fully launching that yet, but now I can um, regarding a divorce. But anyway, that's okay. So anyway, I'm getting all that <laughs> going now. Uh, but Color My Credit, um, I'm going to actually be going to be offering it to originators as a subscription service. I don't know if you know this, but there's no training across the country for originators for credit. So kind of like real estate agents? Yeah. No training? Yeah. I mean, they're I, kind of throwing in the deep end, and there you go. Have fun. 
Yeah, and so I do go teach Color My Credit workshops once a month at real estate offices um, right now at a couple different locations. And so I teach them, you know, how to how to understand it for themselves so that they can help more clients. The key is is that you have to incubate them. You know, you have to get them into systems uh, like home buyer marketing. I'm not sure if you know that, but uh, things that will keep them away from the internet and salespeople and everybody <laughs> coming after them. So I put them in my own little world of uh, being able to look at homes and uh, and 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 uh, get credit education uh, and not have to be out there on the internet exploring it. You know. Yeah, because do not take advice from your great aunt, your great aunts, best friends, veterinarians, labs assistants, yeah. college roommates, divorced brothers, you know, sister in law. Oh, exactly. did a deal in see, we did a deal in seventy eight. Yeah. Okay. I know that girl. She's very nice. I'm sure she's very knowledgeable. Well, it's not because the one internet one. does make us feel like we're experts. Like I, I see it all the time where people are like, "Oh, I know my credit score. I know my credit score." I'm like, you know all eighty of them? Do you really? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> you know? Do you? Do you? Do you really? Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, God, there's so many parallels in between lending and real estate in yes. comes to education and the mental state of our clients. Yes. <laughs> Getting them over that hump, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, so you should, so people can find you on Facebook. So it's basically facebook.com slash color my credit. That's fairly easy. So you'll be putting some of this information out, and yeah. people can use that and share it and send it out to Colormycredit.com like is coming. That's yeah. I was gonna say I don't see that it's up yet, but uh, yeah. It's all cool. very freshly fresh and new. <laughs> I, I do have a series of books coming coming soon. Seriously? That's awesome. Are there going to be coloring books? Activity books. Like, you know, you had a coloring activity book when you were younger. These are adult coloring activity books. Each one of them. <laughs> Color my credit, well, my budget. I don't care. I'm it's, but, it sounds so bad, but it's good. Yeah, I'm like, what kind of a, what do you mean adult, adult, coloring, adult books? coloring books? Adult, adult coloring books. Activity. I have a mixture of like crossword puzzles, seek and find, um, <laughs> like mazes. Whatever we gotta do, it's not working. You know. Yeah, you gotta put it into like. Uh, I imagine the cover looking like an old highlights magazine. That'd be awesome. You know, <laughs> you know the funny thing is, is it's the mentality. Because my little tagline I say is, if you know how to color, you know how to improve your credit. And so you already have people going, I well, I can color. Yeah. <laughs> not not Greg, but some. You know. <laughs> Oh, look up coloring. I learned that one. You know no, Greg. Doing? Greg's dyslexia, I think, also affects his ability to color inside the lines. Uh, gr lines do not exist to Greg. No. And there has been an allegiance between the two of you against me. I see. Okay. <laughs> Did not know we were picking sides. I, so I can't help it. <laughs> you, you, yeah. This is the guy who's allergic to systems. I feel like you would not be great at coloring inside the lines. I'm actually pretty good, Dick. It could be okay. free, 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 free for you, Greg. Just, just gotta go slowly on the outer edges, okay? Just slow. That's the trick. You gotta shade in the insides. Like that's the whole right. little, little cross hatching. All right. Yeah. So, uh, so Alyssa, let's dig into your background a little bit because this is really, really interesting. So, share with everyone, uh, kind of your journey into like getting into comedy and producing and all that stuff before you got into the lovely, fast-paced, and exciting world of mortgages. And hilarious. You're missing hilarious. hilarious. You know why yes. I like stand-up comedy, because mortgage business so much funnier. Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. Because you, you're like, oh, you thought it was a good idea to go buy that fifth wheel in the middle of a transaction? You're hilarious. You I got a bulldog from the mall. That was last week. I got a bulldog at the mall. 140 oh. bucks a month for the next seven years. Oh, you dummy. Got a bulldog. Oh. That's a big boy. Are they going to ride that thing to and from work? Possibly. <laughs> a bulldog. That's a, that's a motorcycle. Goodness. Yeah. Well, my background, I uh, Arizona State University. I was a graduate uh, in '99, and uh, I was also a waitress at the Tempe Improv. Stand-up comedians coming in, and me waitressing there on the weekends. I moved to LA about three days after I graduated, and the owner of the uh, improv chain. Um, at, at the time, all the different improvs said he wanted to start a management company and he needed an assistant, and that I was perfect and that he would pay me nineteen thousand a year, and I was so excited to make nineteen thousand a year. Nineteen thousand, <laughs> big baller. My mom cried. So you lived in a van down by the beach. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I did. Several different ones, actually. Coming out. Moving on out, yeah. 
Okay. Uh, and then, so luckily, that was short lived. I was there for about a year before I got brought over to HBO to do their U.S. Comedy Arts Festival, which was a big festival they had in Aspen. Uh, Steve Martin was an executive producer. Uh, Love Steve Martin. Lots of celebrities involved in it, but it was really, I was just kind of scout the country to find the best uh, new faces. Uh, for people to come to Aspen and make a big deal with them, you know, a development deal to build a show around. So your job so, was to fly over the country, get paid for it, go meet really funny people and laugh your ass off. I hated that. God, yeah. that was a horrible yeah. job. Yeah. Yeah. Get, that was a tragedy of a job. The year before that, or a, year, a couple years before that, they had found Ray Romano. That's where they found him and... and, and wow and built the show around him and everything. So it was definitely a, a great job. The advisory board was the kind of who's who of the whole industry. And at that time in 99, 2000, 2001 in LA, it was a pretty tight comedy circle. Everybody knew each other. It was kind of a Truman show. It's a little different now. Um, but it was a big deal then. That, you know, Comedy Central, that was all, all a big deal. Uh, so I did the HBO thing, um, and then I got recruited over to Politically Incorrect with Bill Maher, and awesome. I was his producer on when it was on ABC, and I booked the funny for the show. Uh, you know, there were four guests on every show, and I was the comedic uh, booker. Um, that's another way to say producer, uh, comedic booker. I really just uh, was out so much in that world that I knew whose person, who, you know, who was managed by who, how to get to them, that kind of thing, and uh, super ambitious and creative. I, was, I think I was 22, 23 at that time. Oh, yeah. Production assistants are looking at me going, what couch did you just come off? But I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> promise you, promise you, it was totally just nothing but hard work. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not laughing. Well, it's funny because I was just listening to uh, to Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew talk about this the other day because I don't think either one of them, maybe they've been on Bill Maher's new show once, yeah. which is now like it's it's only running, what is it, once a week or something like that. Yeah. And so Politically Incorrect was booking like four panelists every day, five days a week or something like that. So that, like the, the number of guests they had to book on that show must have just been ridiculous. It was crazy. And we shared a, a green room with Craig Kilborn. So our green room, and my job as a producer was to just schmooze in the green room, which is probably how I learned a lot of um, just how you network even in my business now, where there you could not you could not raise an eyebrow that you recognize someone. I mean, you had to play it cool. No autographs, no nothing. So I could be sitting next to Bob Costas and Snoop Dogg and, and just have to sit there and be like, all right, I'm cool, you know, like I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> And I think it kind of uh, kind of teaches you. Although I think probably a lot of real estate agents wish I treated them like they were Snoop Dogg. But um, I, I you know, sense I of asking them for pot. The same well. <laughs> they think they're Snoop Dogg. No, <laughs> but you do got to kind of try to not treat, just treat everybody the same. You know, yeah. I think that people respect you more. Oh, maybe. Uh, the ones that uh, that get recognized a lot. I was going to say, the ones that are super narcissistic may want to be treated a little they bit like differently. They like to be recognized, yeah. yeah. That's why whenever Matt travels, he has to only have the green M&Ms and can never be <laughs> made eye contact with. That's right. It's in my rider. rider. Never, don't don't you make right eye contact here. with me. Right That's right. <laughs> really great. Those celebrities. We have to hide the alcohol. You know, yes. I mean, hide the alcohol, you know. Uh. Oh my God, Johnson! Or well, actually, for Matt, it's actually co hide the coffee. He's not allowed to have, be near coffee. He goes crazy, and he reaches for his coffee as we speak. And there it is. That's <laughs> <laughs> how I make it through every show with you, Greg. Oh, you 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 love it. You just gotta keep up with our guests. That's your biggest problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. So, what are what are some of the lessons you think uh, that you came out of that with going into the the mortgage industry? Well, I um I was uh. It was my my boyfriend at the time really didn't uh, he he I ended up marrying him uh, and so anyways but he didn't love it there um, so he wanted to leave and come back here and be in Arizona and start a life and have children I'm so grateful for that I really am um, but we're not together anymore so you know but no and actually I I really am glad that the that uh, the road led me here you know I, I don't think I think that this is exactly where I'm supposed to be. The funny thing is, as I look back on, uh, 
I just had my 20 year reunion and I was student body president back then so I was planning the reunion and I found this old box of memorabilia and I found my graduation speech from that night and I pulled it out and don't even remember writing it and looked at the last line and it said uh, you know grab your paintbrushes how are you gonna color the world and oh I, no way wow that's funny wow. so it's really kind of it's funny how things happen where you know you think well, what was the whole point of the LA thing? Going there and grunting it out and living. Well, that was kind of part of it. Is that sometimes you just, if you know, when you're graduating from college and it's your time and it's your moment, like go get it. Like go out there and if you want to go work in LA, go to LA and go live it and go do it. Yeah. And don't go back later in life and say, oh, I should have been a journalist. Or I should have been this or I should have been that. I, my mom, amazing person, amazing, but kind of heard a little bit of that growing up of I should have done this, I should have been a journalist. I, so I wasn't going to do that. I just wanted to find a way. I didn't want to be on stage or in front of the camera. I wanted to be a, a you know behind the scenes. But I, um, I grew up on stand up and loved it so much and and Saturday Night Live and the whole deal that I just was like this is the moment to do it. So it did teach me uh, to be confident in those decisions. And so now I am a, a fly by the seat of my pants girl uh, a bit. And so when I have a moment of, last year I got asked to speak at Sales Mastery with Todd Duncan. And in a moment of explaining that I could be, you know, talk about credit for 12 minutes and teach people how they can make 100000 in their business, somewhere along the way I say to the, to Linda Davidson, the, the booker for it, uh, that I can sing. I don't sing, okay? <laughs> I tell her, I can sing, yeah, I can do uh, all about that bass, but I'll do all about that score. <laughs> and she bought it, and I the whole year, she was like, it's going to be great, you're going to close out the show, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't even sing, I can't even carry, I'm Cameron Diaz in Best Friends Wedding, I can't carry <laughs> I'm like, we're going to make it work. We're going to make it work. So I just wrote a parody, wrote the whole, you know, rewrote the song, and I got up there in front of 2,000 people and I sang. Wow. And was it good? I don't know. But it was memorable. <laughs> you're taking a few shots prior to getting up there and you're like, all right, I got to do it. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, That's right. A little hurt. liquid courage. <laughs> Gosh. Holy, holy brass so, balls. You know, it was high pitch and, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but you know what I think uh, what I what I'm getting what, what you're taking away and what the skill set you developed I don't know if you had the same personality before if you've morphed after being in the, having to hustle uh, but I mean everybody likes to be recognized but nobody wants to be like like trampled and they want to be seen as someone important in someone's life so you know you're sitting next to Snoop you know, or you're sitting next to Matt if you treat them equally the same no matter if Matt's a hundred thousand dollar buyer and Snoop's a twenty million dollar buyer but they equally get the exact same treatment Absolutely. Is, 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 is something that I think is incredible I think it's a massive strength that you have yeah. um, I mean because you're treating me and Matt the same even though I'm superior you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you know I'm superior. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. Greg. Uh, salty. Salty I today. I know. I had my I had my characters. What can I say? <laughs> yeah, we gotta. I, I keep meaning to call Trader Joe's and buy up every single case of that and have them ship it out somewhere. <laughs> Gotta, to the desert and just yeah, just you're way you're way too quick. You're too quick with the quips. <laughs> well, you know, I, I know it's funny. I'm licensed in California, and I thought I should go over to all those comedians and say, uh, yeah, let's get that credit going, you know. But they don't <laughs> go to dentists. Like so, honestly, I left there going, has anybody yeah. here? Good luck dentist? showing up to like Doug Benson's house and pulling no. the bong out of his hand and convincing him to buy a house. That's funny. Doug Benson took me on a date. Happy New Year. <laughs> Are you serious? I didn't know we were on a date. I left with someone else. He's like, we were on a date. That's <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Sorry, Doug. That's Let's unfortunate. <laughs> Poor Doug. He's oh, such a nice guy. Oh, Doug, Doug. Doug Benson. <laughs> All right. So once again, uh, let's uh, tell people how they can get in touch with you, and especially if they're if they're watching this and they're in like the Scottsdale area, how can they get in touch with you to work with you and send their clients to you for uh, for more? Well, they can email me. Uh, my email is aglutz at ccmclending.com. Stands for Cherry Creek Mortgage Company. Uh, but friend me on Facebook. I'm on Facebook. If you didn't know that already, because I said it a hundred times, but <laughs> I have my Glutz Group page, my Color My Credit page. I'm just one of those girls who would go on a date with you and just sit there the whole time and stare at my phone. And <laughs> guess who likes my post? Guess who likes my post? Yeah. 
Great. No, Facebook's a great way to get a hold of me in all seriousness. Um, email me. You can, uh, yeah, that's probably the best way to go about it. My website's alyssaglutz.com. You can go there um, and apply for a mortgage. That would be great. Uh, Edric, right now, Color My Credit is completely free. Uh, you can't charge consumers for credit uh, education or becomes credit repair, and I'm not credit repair. I'm not here to help you delete and dispute stuff. Credit repair has its purpose, not for me. So I am. Uh, How does this not just not fall under general financial education, the same no. as anything Dave Ramsey or anybody else teaches? Yeah, exactly. It's just free consumer education. Now, if I want to charge for it, I got to write a book and do the workshops and the. Gotcha. The, you know, become a Dave Ramsey. I don't know. Well, well, that's just the cards. That. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Cool. That is good stuff. I, I, I enjoyed it because I know that uh, I know Matt's taken a lot of gems away from this, so he can start you know in his coloring book, and he's gonna be glad to get out of that, that, that first class. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's here's the takeaway for realtors. Number one, you don't know everything. Uh, number two, neither do your clients. What? And uh, maybe if they if they feel if you run into people that uh, don't feel like they can afford a house right now, get them over to somebody that knows what they're talking about, a mortgage lender or someone like a list that knows how to repair credit or uh, or refer them. If you can't refer them to someone like that. At least refer them over to like a credit counseling organization, right, Alyssa, and and get right. them some some help with this stuff, right? Yeah, just get them over to color my credit. Yeah, yeah, it'd be the biggest thing out there for them because they don't know what they don't know, and you know, look, so you guys are real estate agents. You're not you're not you know masters of the you know financial realm. Go have them you know go through this stuff, educate them, treat them like little children like they are, you know, <laughs> and give them give them their credit credit your coloring credit book and, and let them afford. Yeah. Treat them like the children they are. I'm going to make that the official quote of this show. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are guys. never, ever having our clients view these, this podcast, ever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah, you've, you've said some things about clients on this show that I was like, huh, I wonder if anybody ever watches this show. If they they don't. Them, right? they, they, they like Good. They've never brought it up to me, and I've, I've actually listened for it. No, no, those clients have not said it. All right, good. Well, Greg, quickly remind us in the few minutes we have left how people uh, get a hold of you for the McDaniel Challenge, and then we'll send this puppy home. Uh, guys, you're going to use this thing. <clears throat> it's called a finger. And you're going to use this thing called a smartphone. Put them together, and you make a phone call. Sequentially dialing these numbers, okay? Do not miss one. You miss one, you're going wrong. It's 925-915. <laughs> 1978. Sorry, I just see Matt just shaking his head because he's full screen for me right now. <laughs> it's my goal to see how many times I can get him to be like, son of a bitch. Just, uh, uh, yeah. But uh, <laughs> guys, do the, take the McDonald challenge. It is, Matt, what's the cost on it again? Uh, it's free, Greg. That is, that, would be, that is right, Matt. It is free. Good choice on the A-B question there. Um, you know, just book me up. June 21st is the next time you'll have the chance to chat with me. Unless you guys want to wait until June, uh, July, it's really up to you. But I, I think you deserve to talk to me in June. So got, dial me up. Book the time. It's free. Hashtag don't let Greg spend the night alone. Boom, done. Drop mic. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we've got some really good guests coming up. We've got, uh, so if anybody remembers from a couple weeks ago when we had some technical issues with Heather Kurtman talking about uh, bringing more energy to your to your life to accomplish your goals, a uh, healthier diet, and uh, exercise regimen. We're going to have her on the show on Wednesday, so hopefully we won't have any technical issues. And then we've got a top producer named Andy Mulholland uh, that's coming on the show on Friday, so stay tuned for that. Uh, until then, Alyssa, hang out with us for a second. We'll, go, we'll just shut off the live broadcast and let everybody else go. And uh, until then, guys, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. We love you. I'll see you soon.